G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo, grouse to see you all again, and Wom and Jika to another Rip Roaring episode. Today I'm going to show you gals and guys out there how we do restumping on a house that's existing. Um, so restumping is, or reblocking is what it's also known as, is replacing stumps. And what we've got on this job is a number of stumps that are cracked, uh, and we have to replace those as we go. Come with me and ch ch check 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 it check check it out. Here is a stump, and here is another one. If you can see, this one's got a big split in it, and here's a hole that I'm digging right next to it. You have to be careful when you're digging a stump hole next to a stump because the actual stump can collapse. I'm doing it this way because we've actually got stumps in both areas and I've got a jack just under the other side of it. So what I've done is jacked and supported it, then I'll dig this one in, I'll pull that one out and hang this one and then that's ready to rock and roll. I've filled it with water, I've dug it about 150 mil deep and then I filled it with water to soften up that soil a fair bit and that'll make that hole much easier to dig. Where the load is coming down on this stud here we will put a stump under there also and on the other side of that doorway right there we'll put another stump. We'll now let that sit for a while and the water do its thing, seep right into the ground. We'll start another one and do the exact same thing again. So dig about 150 down, get it prepped and then pour some water into it and let it sit for a while. Talking stumping, here we go. Here's some more problems that we're finding. This stump here is actually cracked, so we're gonna replace that one under there. Here's another one that's also cracked. You can, you can also see that one there is cracked. I've got even more in here. You can see this one here's got a massive crack in it. We'll replace those in along there. And on top of all of that, this is quite substantial. The, what you can see now is the amount of rock that this has all the way. So what we'll also do is get, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen one of my videos on the re-leveling of a house, where we've got the water level in here, um, and start leveling this as we're replacing the stumps throughout the house. Really important that we get this point done properly. And we also need to make sure that we understand what weight points there are in the ceiling and where they're coming down on some of these door jams. So here we've got the door jam and we've actually got a weight point and the stump split. So we need to make sure that we've got those correct. So once the house is all finished and plastered and painted and everything else, we need to get this part right now because we're not going to have a chance to get back into it later we're going to put an overlay floor over the entire thing and obviously the house will be finished painted plastered and all of that so we want to make sure that we get this right we don't want any big structural cracks appearing we want doors to be able to swing for a good 20 years without having any work if not longer 50 years without any work being done to them once the house starts to slip or move and crack then doors will always end up getting stuck and we don't want any of that. We want to do it properly now. Here, here I've got the bearer propped and this stump with the big, one of the stumps with the big split in it. And that is broken in half in my hands. You also see that the pin has rusted in there, which has brought moisture inside the stump. So it makes it twice as brittle bit of concrete cancer. So when we come up to something like this, we've got an additional 12 stumps that we've got to do. Wasn't part of the original quote. That's a variation to the actual build cost. And you need to make sure that you vary, that when you do a variation like this, that the customers are well aware of what it is and why you're doing it. Three out of those stumps are load bearing points. So they're actually point loads that are coming down. And if we don't do it properly, everything can split and crack and snap, crackle and pop. So make sure you do it right the first time. Make sure you get as many of them as you can, wherever you can, and you do it 
Do it. Do it. Do it right. Do it right. Quick note, this is just a quick note on the types of shovels that we use. So these are both post hole shovels. You can see that one's got a very nice square end, the other one's got a very rounded end. When, we, when we're doing something like this, re-stumping system, we need to make sure that we're getting to all of the edges of those stump holes. So you saw before, uh, I started digging out a couple of these holes and they were nice and square. That's where that square edge of the shovel really pays dividends. You'll also need to pay heed to the angle. These have both got really good angles on them. You can see that we've got the neck and then we've got the end of the shovel head. Same thing here. They're really good angles. They help us um, angle the shovel. They help us angle the shovel to the back and slide forward and then slide back and forward. So it really gets all of that soil from the edges to the center and we can get it out easier that way. You can get them with a very straight neck, so you've gotta be careful. The straight necks definitely have their place, especially on trenches and things, but for re-stumping systems, this is definitely the better shovel, shovel. This is definitely the better shovel to be going for. The thing I love the most about the water level is you can bring it anywhere around the entire house. So a lot of people say the water level's dead, on a Renault extension, you cannot beat it. It was good enough for the Egyptians and the pharaohs building the pyramids, it is good enough for us. As long as my datum point doesn't change, I can bring this everywhere around the house, round corners, everywhere. And I will be able to get a good set of numbers or a good set of datum points throughout the entire house and level it all up within a mil, mil and a half of each other. So what we've got is, so what we've got, where we've done low bearing points, etc., are really good. Uh, the original part of the house has dropped about 15 mils, so we'll jack that area, get that nice and spotty dog. Uh, there was a bit of a hum, a hum, a hum, a hum in the middle of the kitchen area, so we've got to be really careful about that because uh, that can stuff up our, if we're doing tiles or floorboards or whatever else, we're going to do as an overlay over the area. But all in all, we've probably got maybe two to three mil variation from where we've done all of our work. So that's what we wanted to see, that's what we wanted to do. Here we go. Two days of digging and putting stumps in and re-leveling floors. And we are ready to rock and roll. Now you'll notice that there's a couple of stumps closer to other stumps. This point here, this point here, I've got two stumps right next to each other because this is actually a load bearing point in the ceiling. 
and if and it's a doorway as well for two doors so if this shifts the doors will be out the floor will be out this is a major position where we need to make sure that we pick up all of that weight how we do our stumps whilst you're finishing off your stumps make sure they're all poured at once do one at a time and level it as you go you probably just saw one of the boys just leveling a stump as we finished it off if you're not sure on the height or how far down if our if our hole is 700 deep our stump is a 600 stump and we fill up our concrete 500 mil from the bottom of our bearer to the top of the concrete. So there's 200 millimeters of concrete um, and the stump itself is 100 millimeters off the bottom. If we have a low bearing point, then what we make sure is that we've either got 150 to 200 mil of concrete under the stump. For example is, we would then make the hole 800 mil, the stump would be 600 mil, and we'd again make sure that we come up a minimum of 50 mil, probably more closer to probably more appropriate to go 100 mil up the stumps. So there'd be 300 mil of concrete in those load bearing point stumps. So this one here, the one on the other side of the door, those two both are exactly the same. They've got another 200 mil underneath the stump plus 100 mil above the bottom of the stump. So there's 300 millimeters of concrete and the holes are 350 by 350 square. What we'll do now is we'll leave those for a couple of days and we'll let them cure, then we'll come back uh, and we'll do a jack and pack. So what that means is we will level the entire area. And if you haven't seen it before, I've got a number of videos on how we go about leveling off and we'd be using a water level. Water level because we can get around all of the corners and we can make sure that we've got it smack on Mickey Mouse Browse. Any questions or queries about that, please flick them over for me when you can and I will answer them for you best I can whenever I can. Until then, Thanks for watching and like always, stay on real banana peel old. See you in the soup.